Welcome to Don't Do Disney Without Us. My name is Daniel. And my name is Zach. And welcome back to our show. Uh, the little show we like to do about all things Disney, including the theme parks, the movies, the streaming services, the television networks, the sports when we talk about Run Disney. We should talk about Run Disney because I should have put Run Disney as my villain this week, but I didn't. I didn't. That's all right. We're going to get to that. But really what we're going to talk about today is the state of the movies, the, of the Disney movie empire. In- the, the, the state of the Disney movies. The state of the... Actually, the state of just movies, movies. in general. Uh, but with Elemental recently opening, there's been some disappointment in the box office, and we want to talk about it. Our good friend Dirk Libby wrote an article over on Cinema Blend about it, and Zach agrees with him. I disagree with him, so we're going to get into that uh, in a little bit. But first, I want to talk about Run Disney. Specifically, now, yes, the Princess Half Marathon weekend next year. So... Just to back up a little bit, we are running in the Wine and Dine Half Marathon Weekend. We're going to run the, we, we both, we both, we both run 10Ks. So we're just registering for 10Ks here. So we're going to run the 10K during the Wine and Dine Marathon Weekend coming up in November. We did not make the registration deadline for the marathon weekend and it had sold out. However, we did uh, hook up with the folks over at Autism Speaks. So we will be running the 10K in uh, January at the um, marathon weekend. uh, For charity. For charity. And uh, then we we were all set to register for the Princess uh, 10K that was coming up. Uh, The registration was this past week. We logged in on four different devices. None of them made it through the queue in time before the 10K sold out. Um, However, the 5K was still available. So I'm like, "Eh, let's just go ahead and do the 5K. And by the time I had filled out the information for the 5K and hit submit, it had also sold out. So we ended up not being able to run, not being able to register for anything on the uh, Princess Weekend. Princess Weekend. And and specifically, irritatingly, it was because your Disney Visa card, for some reason, wasn't saved on your Run Disney account, even though it's the same account information you use for your main Disney account. But I think they're treated as two separate accounts. Counts? Yeah, I had to go find my wallet. You had to go and get downstairs and get your yeah. credit card. Yeah, and by the so. time it got back, anyway, the, the point is, 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 is guys, run, hard. run Disney is becoming far too popular, and Disney needs yeah. to do something. Like I don't know if that's expanding the number of race weekends a year, or expanding the number of slots in each race, or I mean, there, there, there's a lot. I mean, you were there. It's yeah, like, there's ten thousand spots. I, I, you know, of the the race that I have run, which is the Springtime Surprise. I came in, you know, 5,000th place or whatever, but it tells you out of how many, right? And it was like out of 9,800. So there were 9,800 people running that race, which means they probably had 10,000 spots and then you lost 200 due to attrition or or whatever. We know someone personally who paid for that race and couldn't make it that weekend and and ended up not running. So, um, you know, out of of an audience of 10,000, 200 is a rounding error rate. So, Um, Yeah, so probably about 10,000 spots per race, and they go within an hour. I mean, that's that's, crazy. Within half an hour for for the 5K and the 10K. And the way around that is to join Club Disney so that you can early register, but that is a $700. It's it's not cheap. uh, Yeah, $700 a year commitment. Uh, and that, and then you still have to pay for the races. I mean, right. It's like, so it's your, your club yeah. run Disney membership yeah. does not come with entry into the races. Yeah. So we're not running in the princess half marathon weekend. Uh, they just announced that the challenge medal for the springtime surprise in 2024 will be stitched. So I definitely, and of course they that. announced it on stitch day yeah. as they should have. It's true. Uh, so that's where we are at. Uh, so didn't make it into the princess. So if you, if you were, if if you're going to, if you made it into the princess marathon half, congratulations, congratulations. If we know you and you tell us you're going to run, we might even drag ourselves out at the crack of dawn to cheer you on. I will definitely go over to the expo to try to get some merchandise because I I really want the Rapunzel shirt or a Rapunzel shirt. And I want a a Rapunzel medal pin, not, not a medal. You get the medal for running the race. I, I just want the pin. Yeah, I just just like, walk up to somebody who finished, be like, hey, do you, do you want it. your medal? Can Give I have it? it? You know what I should? Yeah, just hop the fence, run across the finish line. Because when they're handing out their medals, they're not asking you for anything. They're just like, oh, yeah, you got a bib on. Here you go. It's like, I <laughs> I think 
they might have a problem with that. I could meet someone who just finished the race over in the area where they meet them, say, can I borrow your bib, take their bib, and then just go back and say, oh, I, I forgot to get a medal. Can you give me a medal? And then they'll, they'll give me one. I mean, what the medals cost them 50 cents. <laughs> anyway, we're here to talk about movies. <laughs> All right, let's talk about it then. Uh, Elemental is the latest Pixar film that has opened to a very disappointing opening weekend box office of $30 million. Which um, is the not lowest or second lowest in Pixar's history? Possibly. I'll go with lowest. Sure, that sounds right. Um, the uh, Which, of course, anytime that something like this happens, it Brings out all of the uh, the, the, the hypotheses. The hypo- I almost said the hypotenuse. All of the you hypotheses. No, we're not in geometry class. All of the hypotheses, right? Hypotheses? Hypotheses? Hypotheses. Hypotheses of why it happened. Like, why did this happen? Oh, it happened because of this or it happened because of that. I have a very strong opinion as to why it is the way it is. Um, and uh, Dirk has a very strong opinion as to why it is the way it is. Uh, I disagree with him. You agree with him. So we're talking about Dirk Libby over on Cinema Blend. We will put a link to the article down below in the doobly-doo. As if well you want to, as his uh, appearance on this very show. That's right. You can go back and check out that episode. I think it's just called A Chat with Dirk Libby. I believe it <laughs> yeah. is. Uh, however, in this particular case, uh, his... Headline is, Pixar Elemental has a mediocre box office. Why that annoys me. And the gist of the article is is that Elemental is everything people say they want from new movies. It's not based off another franchise. It is a completely new piece of IP. Um, uh, People feel that all they're ever getting from movies nowadays are you sequels, know, sequels and remakes and live reboots. action remakes yeah. and reboots. Right. And so this where's is where's all the original storytelling. Right. And so this elemental is an original story that is being told by Pixar. So it, it is on paper what people are saying they want. And yet it had this really disappointing weekend and the, I agree with that. Right. But Dirk's premise is, is that, Audiences are clearly skipping the theaters. This is a quote here. Audiences are clearly skipping theaters for Pixar movies thanks to Disney+. Plus. I don't think it's that simple. I don't think that Disney+, Plus really has uh, that much to do with it. Um, a lot of, I mean, all the Marvel movies are going to eventually end up on Disney+, Plus, but that doesn't keep Guardians of the Galaxy from being the second highest grossing film of 2023. It's like, yes, it will eventually be on Disney+, Plus this year. It's like, so... Right. It, it, but if it was just Disney Plus, I would just wait for that too, right? But that's not a fair comparison because Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is a second sequel to an established franchise. Yeah, it's a right. known quantity. You're right. Ah, there you go. And so here's where Dirk and I disagree. I feel that the reason that known quantities do better at the box office, or at least better marketed stuff, and we'll talk about that in a second, uh, why they do better at the box office is because. Going to the theater has become a royal pain in the ass. It is not fun. It is crowded. It is uh, 20 to 25 minutes of commercials before you can ever even see the thing that you're there to see. So, you know, your 1130 showtime is more like... Midnight, 12 or yeah. 12 15 right and then on top of that you've got uh people that are around you that are making noise or getting up and then going to the bathroom modern movies tend to be like trying to outdo each other for who can be the longest movie like avatar 2 was three hours and something avatar 2 was terrible but my point is is that had we seen it in a theater it's like i i can't sit three hours in I the theater without i may right? have gotten up and just walked out it was that bad <laughs> but but you didn't we watched it at home um, and it was still that bad. We're not talking about Avatar 2. We we're talking about I Pixar. know. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, my my premise and the reason that I feel that these things are doing bad is because the theater going experience sucks. And on top of the theater going experience sucking, we are in an age where large screen TVs are coming down in price. We're right now in 2023, we're at a point where you can get a 65 inch a TV for around $600, a decent 65 inch TV for around $600, which surprisingly, maybe to you, is below the cost of what it actually costs to make that thing. And the reason is, is because the 
smart TVs that have all the streaming apps on them and everything are gathering uh, information about what you're watching and are able to make more money off of selling that data. So it's subsidizing the machines. The same thing happens with Xbox and Playstations. They can sell the hardware at a loss because you're going to buy games and do other things over a period of time that will make that money back. Uh, you know, more than make that money back. So right now, you know, televisions are really, really close to the line. There's a very small profit margin in television because they can make the money off of the streaming apps. Um, you know, if you use a Roku or an Apple TV or anything, you're, you've, you've thwarted them. But uh, yeah, for, the, for a lot of people who just come home with a smart TV and then, you know, download the Netflix apps and use the, the Samsung smart TV apps or use it. I don't know why I'm doing this with my hand. Uh, <laughs> He's got a remote. You can't. <laughs> I talk with my hands. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, I just feel that... These things are all conspiring to work together, right? So I, I went to a website called The Numbers. Um, so the, I'm, I'm now going to back up what I'm he saying is, here. He is, as the kids say, bringing the receipts. Let me, let me bring the receipts here. There is a website called thenumbers.com, and that's the-numbers.com. And what they do is they, they've they crunched a whole bunch of movies from uh, movie data, uh, theatrical releases, the ticket prices, the tickets sold, all these things, uh, just a lot of bulk data about movies from 1995 until 2023. So... Uh, I have all of this data here. So this is what I can tell you about the data as I look through it. Uh, over the past 25 years, so from 1996 to 2022-ish, um, ticket sales have been pretty, pretty the same, right? It's like when you look at this here, they're all over a billion, right? It's like the lowest number, the lowest year uh, of ticket sales was in 2014, 1,257,000,000, I just lost it, 265,123 tickets. And the most tickets ever sold in any year in that range was 1,575,756. Right. Now the difference between the smallest year in ticket sales and the largest year in ticket sales is about 25%. So there's a 25% difference between the, the, the worst every year that they've had over the past two and a half decades and the best year that they've ever had in the two and a half decades. But when you look at them year to year, percentage wise, they, it never really goes up more than four or 5% each year. Uh, and it kind of goes up some years, it goes down some years, it, but it's a very small window that we're dealing with there. Meanwhile, uh, the average ticket price has gone from seven fifty in two thousand and nine all the way up to ten dollars and forty five cents in twenty twenty two, and that is the average ticket price. So that counts in matinees and uh, you know third run movies, and so this is not you know now we have three D and Dolby and, and IMAX and, and IMAX reserve right? seating and reserves better right. reserve seating and right. best reserve seating and. Yeah. So you're looking at a universe where for just the two of us without kids, it's going to cost us probably 45 to $50 in tickets, just tickets, just right. 45 to $50 in tickets to get our reserve seat recliner in whatever movie that we want to see it. We and, don't, and we, we don't, don't get, uh, day. yeah. What? We don't usually watch 3d. No, yeah. because 3d glasses and motion sickness and bad. And yeah. we don't get concessions. Usually yeah. Yeah. we might get a drink, but mm -hmm. it's like, the, the, all those extra added costs we, yeah. we don't do so yeah so we're, we're already looking at you know 50 or 60 dollars just for the two of us to go to a theater we have to sit through these stupid commercials we have to and trailers trailers and because they play so many commercials and trailers a lot of people show up late so then once you're comfortable in your seat because you arrived on time you now have to keep getting up to let people get by you right you have to put your recliner back down so that people can get past you and so that they can go and then they get up and leave and go to the bathroom it's, it's constant traffic back and forth it's people that have got crinkly candy wrappers they've got it's just it's just annoying meanwhile here at the house we have a lovely couch we have a lovely recliner we have a 75 inch television we have you know a decent surround sound system so it's like it you're asking me to pay 60 bucks to see a movie that I'm going to have a much better experience watching at home. So the only movies that I'm really entertain going in through the, the hubbub to do that are going to be huge movies, 
So those are going to be your big Marvel films, your big, you know, summer blockbuster. Elemental is certainly not a huge blockbuster. It just doesn't fall into that category, right? Why would I go see just any given romantic comedy or, or something that wasn't like a really huge, big blockbuster movie, uh, when I could just see it at home much more comfortably and uh, have a much, much better experience. So my belief is it has nothing to do with Disney Plus. It has nothing to do with those things. It has to do with the theater experience is very subpar right now. And uh, why? It's just going to continue to get that way. Um, I would also like to point out that ticket sales started dipping down by a you know, six and a half percent in 2019 before the pandemic. This was, so this is not something that, uh, you know, the ticket sales were not, uh, you know, just keep going up and up and up. And then the pandemic happened and they all like fell out of the bottom, right? It's like they were already starting to trend downward before the pandemic. Now I have said my piece, uh, (laughs) you would like to, I believe, defend Dirk Libby. Go. No, I just, I don't necessarily, I, I, I agree with Dirk in that, you know, Disney did release, Pixar films specifically, three of them back to back, straight to Disney Plus for free. Mm-hmm. And theaters are shortening the windows. It used to be 90 days and then it was 60 days. And now it's 30 to 45 it, days, sometimes even shorter, a matter of weeks. It depends on the theater. Disney right now is doing a very annoying thing. It's anywhere from 30 to 90 days. Like, Avatar 2 was a 90 day and like Wakanda forever was 90 days, but, right. but most of their mid tier movies are within 45. Days. So I, I will agree in that Disney by doing that and by sometimes releasing things early onto streaming Disney and other movie studios are training people to be like, you know what? This movie will be out on streaming in oh, three weeks, a month, mm-hmm. a month and a half. We mm-hmm. can wait that long. There's no reason to go to the theater because the theater experience sucks. Unless it is something that has truly piqued their interest and is something they want to do. Super Mario Brothers is a good example. Right. I I'm not a I'm not a Mario. I never played Mario Brothers. I never played Super Mario Brothers. I, I'm aware of the franchise, but I've never played those games. I was that was after my time. However, I was. A, acutely aware of that movie because it was advertised everywhere. It was like there was so much marketing on that movie that you couldn't help but know about it. And that's part of the problem with Elemental. I knew yeah. Elemental existed because we saw it being talked about online yeah. and we saw it being yeah. talked about at D, uh, D23. Mm-hmm. But And maybe this is because we don't hang out in the right places or watch television or, or what have you. I never saw a single advertisement for it unless it was someone reposting a trailer or something on some social media site. You know, we don't watch the local evening news. So I don't know if Disney ran elemental commercials or something, but I, and Dirk touches on this in in his article as well. Some people didn't even know elemental was out in its opening weekend until the weekend was half over. And you could replace the word, you could replace elemental with strange world. You could replace that with uh, what was the one before strange world. I don't remember. Uh, turning red. They didn't do a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, it wasn't in theater, but that, it, 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 something's happening over at Disney marketing that is just, yes. uh, D- Disney yeah. is failing abysmally at marketing their non Marvel properties. Yeah. And it's tanking those films in terms of yeah. box office. And, and I, I think this is one of those instances where when you say Disney, it's fraught with peril because it is such a huge company. Right? Mm-hmm. We we know just from talking to people in the pin community, like the people that work for the Disney pin places, that Marvel and Lucasfilm and what they're their own companies. They're they're owned by Disney, but they are still their own companies. They do their own pin designs. They do their own marketing. They do their own things. So uh, clearly, somebody's doing really good marketing at Marvel and doing really bad marketing at over at, at Disney and Pixar. So, uh, however, comma, I think that we're going to have to get out of this mindset that the box office sales are the only metric by which we can measure the success of a movie. So I will disagree with Dirk on his premise that if Elemental doesn't do well at the box office, they'll never make another one. There are plenty of other places that Elemental can make that money up, and we have yet to see whether that happens or not. We talked about- 
two days ago. Yeah. Elementals made 121 ish million dollars worldwide, but mm-hmm. it cost at least 200 million dollars to produce, not counting marketing. So it, as of right now, mm-hmm. it's a certified flop. It may make its money back. It may make mm-hmm. a profit over the course of the long run. But the people making decisions, I think, on things like sequels or additional stories in this universe may not look at that. Okay. So but, I, I I don't think I I don't think Dirk's wrong there. It, it, okay, it, but 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 you're you're saying that just to circle back a little bit. So you're you're saying that Dirk is right in the sense that Disney released these Pixar films on Disney straight to Disney Plus and so it devalued those films. Right. But at the same time, HBO Max was releasing day and date films that were going to the theater. They did that through all of 2021. It didn't devalue any of those films. So it's like it's not like you're going, oh, it's on HBO. I'll just wait till it comes on HBO. It was like I, I don't think that that three movies is enough of a sample to say that, oh, we've devalued every Pixar movie. I think it's that's just I, I feel like that's that's an easy way out. Really, when you get down to it, I think it's it's down to they didn't market these things very well. No, they didn't. They And they're not blockbusters. And nobody wants to go. Well, I don't want to say nobody. A lot of people don't want to go to the theater, myself included if it's not going to be something that's worth me paying 60 bucks to go and do. Right. So, and in my mind, now, Dirk's other premise, did you have anything else to add about Dirk's thing? Did I cut you off or? I don't. I want to get to his next point, which is he's implying that if you're one of those people that's waiting for it to come out on Disney Plus, then you're adding to the problem. You're, 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 you're basically guilty of uh, sending a signal to the studios that you don't want new content because you're not willing to pay for it. But I think that overlooks a big market that we participate in almost all the time now, which is the uh, streaming sales. Like, so as soon, you know, there are windows before something will go to a streaming platform, right? Those are those 30 to 40 days. But the smaller window, which used to just be for like Redbox and things like that, have now expanded out to Amazon and whatnot, where you can buy the movie. and Or rent it or right. some, some sort of paid streaming. Right, and we have continuously done that. So we did that for Super Mario Brothers. We paid for it as soon as it was available online. Uh, we paid for- Quantumania, uh, Quantumania, Wakanda Forever. Wakanda Forever, even though we had seen Wakanda Forever in the theater. Uh, oh, no, wait, did we, did we watch it once it hit free streaming? Yes. Yes, but because we, we did actually- yeah. we saw Wakanda Forever and Little Mermaid in the theater. Right. But we, uh, yeah, we paid for these. And as soon, Avatar 2, we, we paid for as soon as it was available on streaming. We will do the same for Elemental. Uh, we're actually, I'm very excited. July 7th, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is going to be available for purchase on streaming. And we'll I pay for it then. Pay for it then. Not so, that it needs yeah. the help, but. Right. But what I'm saying is, is like, it's not that simple. It's like, I feel like the movie industry is in the same place the music industry was a long time ago when they were completely marking, you know, marking their success of everything by album sales. And we had gotten past that point where I don't want 14 songs, 13 of which I hate. I just want this one single. I just want to buy this one single. I don't want to have to buy a $20 CD in order to get a one single, which of course spawned a whole bunch of music piracy, right? Until Apple stepped in and said, no, it's 99 cent per single. Uh, and the music and basically forced the music industry to get on board with it. And of course now the weird, We've evolved past that even to go into streaming services. So I feel like we, we're we going to have to find a way to- uh, No longer let raw box office yeah. and paid streaming yeah. be the end all be all as to whether a film is, a, is, is considered a success, whether it gets sequels, et cetera. Yeah. And there's there, this- this has been something that's been talked about for a long time, right? Movies make money in other ways than just raw box office, right? These movies make money off merchandising. Movies make money off of, uh, you know, endorsements and things like that. So the product placements and things like that. There's a lot of ways that movies can make money that, um, you know, aren't directly off of box office sales. So even though it may have a disappointing box office sale and it may look like on paper that it cost 200 million, but it only made 50 million, but if there was a $25 million brand endorsement in the, you know, that also offset some of those costs, and then, you know, they did a $50 million deal with McDonald's to have a Happy Meal toy. I mean, it's like, there's a lot of 
other ways that movies can make money, not to count the things in the theme park, right? There is some value to having the live action aerial at meet and greet at Disneyland because people- and studios. Yeah, people will pay money to go and do that. Not not a lot, but certainly, you know, you're paying $120 for a ticket to get in for the day to do that. It's something um, uh, more than a movie ticket. So- A lot more than a movie ticket. Anyway, it's- I, you know, we don't have the answer. We don't work in the entertainment industry. I just feel like we're kind of in this new world where, you know, and I some, think COVID some, sped it up. Something, some, it, yeah, it, it was always coming, but COVID really sped it up. So, some, yeah. some, uh, God, I can't talk today. Um, one, one of our friends uh, who, who works in uh, New York on Broadway and is really invested in the theater and really loves the theater, um, said that in order to get to that world where we no longer consider movies successes based on how much they make, the industry is going to have to destroy itself from within and start over. So Mm -hmm. if you're in the movie industry and you (laughs) hate the way some things make money and some things don't, well, you know. I mean, it it is beyond the scope of this podcast because we are not experts in this, no, but this no. is a lot of what the writer strike is about. It's like there, there was an established way to pay writers for content, but that relied on that content being a uh, very long tailed content mm-hmm. that continued to make money over time. And once it moved over to streaming services and removed that yep. long tail, you get, you, you, you get your initial paycheck and then yeah. you don't see a dime. Right. But that initial paycheck was valued at, in the world where you were also mm-hmm. going to get residual payments. So it's, it's one of those things we're going to have to uh, come around and, and get this thing up. Uh, somehow we're going to have to fix it. I don't know if you have thoughts, if you're in the movie industry and you'd like to uh, chime in on that, please do. Uh, you can reach us in several ways. Our email address is don't do Disney at gmail.com. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, you just leave a comment down below. Uh, if you're watching this on Spotify, uh, send us an email. Um, by the way, those are our two video platforms that you can see this show. Uh, if you're listening in our audio only, you can head over there, but you can always just use our email. Wherever fine bond get. Bondcasts? Yes. Yeah, right, right. for fine no, podcasts. We only, we only are talk served. about James Bond. That's all we do. Bondcast. Talk about. Yes, the Bond. <laughs> Bondcast. James Bondcast. Anyway, uh, let's wrap this all up here today uh, and get to our heroes and our villains of the week. This is an even number show, so I believe that means that we start with our heroes. So, Zach, I'll let you start. Who is your hero of the week? So, my hero of the week is actually not Disney, Ooh. it's Universal. Oh. <gasps> That was my gasp. So for the past, this coming Thursday and past Thursday, uh, the Red Coconut Club at City Walk has been hosting Pride Nights. Mm -hmm. And it's, I've seen pictures and video from people we know who went and it looks like everyone had a great time. And while I'm still pissed off that Universal has never said anything about the situation in Florida, good on them for at least giving our community safe spaces to go and have fun and see and be seen and you know exactly. I, I i'm willing to give credit where credit is due yeah and uh yeah Th- those are nice things right because it's not just slap a rainbow on a piece of merchandise and you know, right it's like, here spend money right it's like hey come and celebrate with us so, and also spend money yeah uh my hero of the week is brutus brutus the service dog uh who is uh, this adorable little lab who is a service dog for a disney college program uh participant and he has his own tiktok account it's called brutus the number four pause so brutus four four pause get it because he has four paws uh and he's it's he's super adorable i believe he's also on instagram with the same name brutus b-r-u-t-u-s four pa- I'll, we'll put the link in the show notes anyway the point is uh go check it out if you haven't checked it out already uh pretty much daily does a little recap of how he spends his day. He's got a cute little voiceover that they do with it, with an AI voice that that's really, really sweet. I first Um, heard that AI voice with Brutus. So now every time I hear it in someone, because it's just one of the generic TikTok voices, it's like, I like, is that Brutus? Like, no, it's just, no, just something else. Uh, It's like, it's like that Jesse girl who narrates every TikTok. Yeah. Uh, Okay. And then your villain of the week. My villain of the week is, the orange bird groovy garden shirt that I bought at Epcot Mm -hmm. for me and I picked it up and I swear, I swear, I swear it was signed as a small and I was going to wear it the other day. Yes. And I held it up and I'm like, this is a small. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at the shirt 
And it's a large. So he immediately so, headed to the fat person in the house and went, here, Daniel, wear this shirt. I did not say that. You got a free <laughs> shirt. So now I'm going to Epcot tomorrow because someone signed the shirt wrong and or I just didn't pay attention. One of the two. But yeah. All right. My villain of the week are the Nazis, literal Nazis at the gates at Disney. And when I say gates at Disney, the only public sidewalk that's anywhere near Disney property is over near Disney Springs. It's off of uh, 535. Is that the road that's Apopka there? Popka Vineland. Yeah. Uh, and so they're out there protesting whenever they, as much, you know, Sturm and Drum that they give us about uh, Sturm and Drum. Is that right? Sturm, 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 Sturm and Drum. It's as much grief. As much grief as these people like to give us about, hey, sure, you protect the kids or whatever. If you've seen some of the videos and the, just the vulgar things that these Nazis are shouting in front of kids, uh, pulling into Disney. It's, uh, you know, kind of way. I, it, whatever. Free speech, yay, but come on. Not like literal Nazis at Disney. No. They deserve to no. be villains. You don't, so. you, you don't get to pull free speech when you're a fucking Nazi. What I want is I want the lady that plays Cruella de Vil at Disneyland to. Or the just, evil queen. Or just to, yeah, both of them. Just come over and talk to them. Just have a, a very civil conversation with them. And if you've ever seen their TikToks, you'll know that it's not going to be There's civil. There's no civil conversations <laughs> with Nazis, dear. They just need to be punched. Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for sticking with us. Uh, we're having some camera, weird camera issues. Our camera's being yeah. wonky, so we might be getting yet another camera. <laughs> just so just I mean, the, the vlogging cameras when you look them up are great for when you're out in the park and vlogging and doing things in very small but when you're so if down, you have you try, try a camera down. recommendation yeah. specifically for recording studio podcasts yeah. please let us know in the comments in yeah. an email all of our social contact way thingies are in the doobly do down below you mean the links to our socials i refuse mm-hmm. to use that word and i will roll my eyes every time you say it okay great uh excellent i think we're done So I think all that is left for me to say is to uh, ask you, nay, 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 beg you, please, 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 don't do Disney. Without us. This podcast is a proud member of the Pride 48 Podcasting Network. Check out more great shows at pride48.com.